All right, we're going to start seated position, easy cross leg. Grounding the hips, get nice and tall in the body. Take a nice deep breath in, arms overhead. And let's bring the hands down into 90 degree angle and twist. We're going to keep twisting for about a minute and a half to warm up the trunk, warm up the spine, deepen the breath. You'll find that you automatically breathe in this pose, this action. Pumps your lungs automatically. So keep it going. Try to keep a nice lifted spine at the same time. Feel that your hips are grounded and you're tall right up through the top of your head. If you can do it without feeling dizzy, you're going to want to bring the head along with the upper body. If you're feeling dizzy, just go ahead and spot somewhere straight ahead on the floor. You can go as fast as you want or as slow as you want. The faster you go, the more that you're going to kick into the abdominals, obliques. Keep it going, keep the breath going. Having a flexible spine helps you when you are in the batting position. Gives you a little better torque. So a few more seconds, guys. Take a nice tall back. Inhale deep. And then come back to center, not so bad. Inhale, arms up to the sky, palms face each other. This is where your arms are gonna feel about 10 pounds heavier than they actually are. And then exhale, arms down to the floor, palms facing down as well. Inhale up and exhale down. Same thing, about a minute and a half. You're gonna try and relax the shoulders as you do this. You're gonna try and keep the back as tall as possible and keep the elbows as straight as you can. This also looks pretty easy, but it's a real tough exercise to do for the long term. You want to keep the arms as straight as you can. You could clearly feel working and warming up the deltoids, still trying to, trying to build some strength in the spine. This one tends to bring a little more calmness to you. So if you feel like you had a really bad at bat or a bad play in the field, maybe a good idea to step back in the dugout, do this, do a couple deep breaths in and out. Go as fast or as slow as you need to. This really gets you going in the breath. As you could feel, it's warming you up. You're gonna feel a lot of heat generated from this motion. Couple more, inhale, exhale, last one, inhale. Good, hands, heart center. And let's stretch the legs out, roll the shoulders out if you need to, and swing the legs around. Coming onto your hands and knees into table pose. I want you to peek down at your hands and make sure your hands are shoulder width apart, right underneath the shoulders, elbows, wrist joint. Wrist joint is a 90 degree angle. And take a peek at your hands and make sure there's equal space between each finger. And then tuck the toes and press into downward facing dog. Checking down at your feet, make sure your feet are parallel. How do you know if your feet are parallel? Is your heels directly behind your second toe? And you're gonna feel a little bit more of a stretch on the inner thigh side of the leg. Softening the knees if your hamstrings feel particularly tight. Both arms are strong and straight. And every now and then, peek down at your hands and make sure your hand is fully engaged into the floor. This is where wrist problems happen when you start rolling over to the side of one hand or the other. Try to keep full plug into the floor with your whole entire hand at all times. So come high on all 10 toes. Sink the heels equally to the floor and bring your right leg up to the sky. Most of the weight is in the left foot, right hand. Let your head hang. Try to relax in the neck. 
let's keep the eyes open, that's much better. So you wanna have one nice line from the wrist joint all the way up the arm, down the body, right out through the heel. You can sink the left heel a little bit deeper. Before you let it go, lift that right leg a little bit higher and then let it go, switch sides. Left leg extends as long as you can behind you, as high as you can. Both arms are strong and straight. Check in with your head again. Make sure your neck is relaxed, breath is deep, eyes are open. A Little bit higher. Exhale, release. And let's try right hand to your low back. Little bit harder. You wanna make sure you have secure left hand into the mat so you don't slip out from underneath yourself. Left arm is strong and straight. Feel like you're pushing the floor away and press your chest through to your thighs. Inhale deeply, lift your hips up to the sky. Good, and then exhale, switch. On the inhale, bring your left hand to your low back. Secure in your right hand, press through. Hips up nice and high, no fist, Joe. That's it. So equal in both feet. Full extension of the right arm, deep breath in, hips high. Exhale, both hands down. Hold your down dog. Another breath or two. And then you're gonna bend the knees, pull the hips back, look to the front edge of your mat, and five jumps, trying to bring the hips over your wrist joint eventually. You're not all gonna look like this right away. You maybe are gonna take baby jumps to begin with until you feel a little more secure with your arms, with your upper body strength. This too is a lot of core control, forces you to breathe. Once you get to your standing forward bend, Let's bring the feet to parallel and hips width apart. So you can see that your knees shoot straight down from your hip joint, ankles are right underneath the knees. Grab opposite elbow with opposite hand and hang, let's soften the knees. Connect chest and belly to your thighs, let your head go, try to keep your eyes open. Every breath you wanna to try to get some length in the spine, some depth of stretch in the hamstring. Your weight is slightly forward on your foot, Take a deep breath in, sink as deep as you can into the fold. Your next inhale, you're gonna come up halfway with a flat back. Make sure you don't knock your knees together, that your knees stay right over your second toe. Pop out through your elbows, back through your tailbone. Try to get your back to look like a table. That's it, take a little more length and then fold it back over, standing in a hang again. You might feel the need to have to rock back and forth or roll out your neck. And same thing again last time, halfway up, flat back. Watch those knees, hips up a little bit higher, that's it, extend, extend. One more deep breath. Get your back as long as you can. Get your chest to come out. Nice, and then fold it over. Release your elbows. Ground your hands on the floor. Walk or jump into plank pose. Plank pose, your body is nice and long. Your shoulders are right over your wrist joint. Your wrist joint is in a 90 degree angle. Fingers are spread, palms flat. So lower yourself down. Low push-up position, strong legs. Roll yourself into upward facing dog. Nice back bending pose, shoulders back. And then you're gonna press into downward facing dog. If you're feeling strong, you can add an extra push-up like you saw. So deep breath in. On the exhale, drop the chest in. And let's bring the right foot forward between the hands. Check and see that your knee is over your ankle, your right knee is over your right ankle, and then you're all the way back into the left heel. Once you feel stable, extend the arms out nice and long and bring yourself up to perfect lunge. Once you feel okay here, nice and balanced, bring your hands into heart center. And adding a twist, let's bring our left arm to the outside of the right leg. Try to get the left armpit to cradle the right knee and then bring your hands back into heart center. 
Try not to forget about your back foot. You want all your weight back into that heel. Take some length, take some breath. Your next inhale, come back up to center. Perfect lunge. And on your exhale, hands come down to the floor on the inside of your right foot. So half lunging squat. Press back through your left heel. Some of you are gonna feel really loose and able to go or move toward going down to your forearms here. Trying to avoid the roundness in the back. That's it, take a lot of length right out through the top of your head. And then straighten your arms, press back to plank pose again. Lower down, low push up position. Upward dog, big stretch, roll your shoulders back. And downward facing dog again. When you're ready, left foot forward between the hands. Let's try the other side. All the way back through the right heel. Solid in the front left foot. Arms come out and up. Perfect lunge, other side. Once you feel in control, bring the hands into heart center and twist. Remember, you always have the option of dropping that right knee down to the floor to give yourself a little more stability in the pose. So this is great. They have nice lines back through their heel, out through the tops of their head. One more deep breath in. And then come back to the perfect lunge, arms overhead. And both hands to the floor on the inside of the left foot. Half squat lunge again, other side. That's it, if you need to, you can drop the knee here as well working towards getting into this position with the forearms down. And then straighten the arms. Press back to plank pose, right into your downward facing dog. And then let's look forward and bring the feet to the outside of the hands, coming into a squat hold. Okay, get your feet flat, settle in, find the correct width you want your feet to be, whatever feels comfortable for you. They're all pretty deep in the pose because they're all catchers. A lot of you are not gonna be able to get this deep in the pose. You're gonna go as deep as you can, keeping the feet flat. Some of you are gonna find yourself only able to go about this far and that's fine. Tailbone sinks, open the chest. Hold and breathe. You want to be in the whole foot. They make it look very easy. Another few seconds of breath. Maybe the tailbone sinks a little bit more. Keep adjusting yourself in the poses. If you fall over, big deal. Set yourself back up, get back in the pose and start over again. And then let's bring the hands to the floor, straighten the legs, and when you're ready, press back into your plank pose again. So reset your hands, make sure they're right under your shoulders. That's it, your wrist joint is a 90 degree angle, and you're stacking your joints right on top of each other. That's the most solid position to be in. And let's do wrist turns, opening up forearm and wrist. Right, arm's gonna, right hand is gonna turn around, equal weight, in both hands, spread the fingers out, especially on the hand that you turned around. Make sure there's enough weight in the thumb and pointer side of that arm. And you want each wrist joint to be a 90 degree angle. One way to really tell if it's lined up correctly is if your wrist joints are in line with each other. And then go ahead and switch. This too is pretty tough. So if you're working the wrists, the wrists feel good, but you're finding it a little challenging in the abdominal leg area, then just go ahead and drop the knees. So you wanna bring that wrist joint back. Good. One line from wrist to wrist. Each wrist joint is a 90 degree angle. Flex your quads, breathe, switch it around. One more time each side. Right arm. If you're not able to get a complete twist 
on the wrist and just go about halfway. So the fingers will turn out to the side and work it from there until eventually the wrist joint is completely turned around. And last time. And then release, press back into your downward facing dog and drop down onto your forearms. You're gonna go into a plank forearm hold. So they're measuring out the distance between each elbow to make sure that their elbows are right underneath their shoulder joint, swinging the forearms around, trying to get the forearms parallel to each other, palms flat. So in addition to working the abdominal area, they're gonna get a nice shoulder opener as well. So when you're ready, press back into plank and hold. One minute hold. You wanna press all the way back through the heels. You want a 90 degree angle in the elbow joint. Your elbow's right underneath your shoulder, palms are flat. If you're feeling too much pressure in the low back, then you're gonna exaggerate the pelvic tilt and breathe, hold and breathe. This too is really difficult to hold. If you're feeling a little bit taxed, drop the knees, take a breath and bring it back up. Your quads are very much engaged in this pose. You might start shaking, almost there. You could scream if you want to, 10 seconds. You got it, drop the knees down, all the way down to your belly. Good, bend the knees. Reach around, grab the ankles or the shins. If you're not too flexible, grab the toes. If you still can't reach, you might want to take a strap, wrap it around your legs and just hold on to the strap. Okay, so first we're flexing the quads, hip flexors or stretching the quads and hip flexors. Gently press the hips into the ground, draw the heels closer and closer to the hips. Nice deep breath in. On the exhale, we're gonna press the legs back toward the back of the room. Lift the upper body up. Flex those feet. That's it. Shoulders out of the ears and shoulder blades squeeze together behind you. Good, lift a little bit higher and then let it go. Release the legs, palms flat right under your shoulders and slow as you can, press into child's pose. A lot of these poses address a flexible, strong back, which is really important because a lot of athletes today tend to really work the abdominals a lot, and we need to keep a balance in the anterior body and posterior body. So working the back, keeping the back flexible and strong is really important to prevent injuries. Next exhale brings you into downward facing dog. Bend your knees, pull your hips back, look to the front edge of your mat. Five jumps into standing forward bend. Good. Already a lot more open, a lot more freedom. Nice strong arms. Good. Get there. And then soften the knees, roll yourself up to standing. Arms are going to come over your head, palms press. Hands, heart center, a couple of standing poses. Soften the knees, eagle pose. You're gonna bring the right thigh over the left thigh, squeezing the inner thighs together, and some of you are gonna be able to hook the right toes behind the left calf. If not, keep it here. Then right arm under the left arm, trying to bring the palms together. If you have tight shoulders or a bigger chest, you might want to bring the backs of the hands together. Shoulders are down out of your ears, elbows are up. Hold it and breathe. So working on your focus, your balance, what's harder to balance, and on one leg, all twisted up. You're getting a nice upper back stretch, deep shoulder stretch. Elbows high as your shoulders. Bring the hands forward so they're right over the elbow if you can. Sink it two inches deeper if you can, and then let it go. 
Inhale your arms up to the sky. And let's try the other side. You might need to shake those legs out. And soften the knees. Left leg over the right knee. Or left leg over the right thigh. Once you feel balanced and secure, left arm under the right arm. Elbows as high as your shoulders. Shoulders out of your ears. Keep the breath going. Sink deeper and deeper into the thigh if you can. Hips width apart and parallel. It's your favorite. Arms are gonna come up. Palms face the ceiling like you're holding a tray in your hands. You don't wanna drop that tray and drop your shoulders out of your ears. Bring the shoulders back, good. Okay, you're gonna come up nice and high on the toes. So push the floor away with the balls of the feet. Use your quads, use your calf. Lift through the top of your head, keeping that action Bring yourself down into a squat on the toes. Toe balance. Keep your thighs parallel to each other. Don't drop that tray you're holding. That's it. Go two inches deeper, maybe two more, and then come all the way up onto the toes. Deep breath. Exhale, lower the heels. Shake it out. Good job. All right. Now let's bring the right knee into your chest. and grab the right big toe on the inner thigh side of the leg using your first two fingers and thumb. Left hand's gonna go on your left hip. Fix your gaze out in front of you on the floor somewhere and when you're ready, extend the leg the best that you can. Pull your right shoulder back. on the hips and hold the leg out there straight and strong push through your heel use your quad use your gut lower abdominals go ahead and bend the knee nice and slow next exhale press back into it's called warrior three so at first our hands are on our hips for stability make sure our hands are center our hips are center sorry and then bring your arms into airplane if you feel okay you might want to stay there Balance is good. Bring your arms out in front of you. Counterbalancing. Hopping through your fingertips, pressing out through your back heel. Really nice. Take a little more length, big inhale. On the exhale, fold yourself over, hands to the floor, fingertips to the floor. Let's claw the floor. Standing split. Upper body falls, head hangs, right leg presses up to the sky nice and high. Try to keep your eyes open. So depending on your flexibility, your hands will eventually walk right in line with your toes. Someday, left arm will grab the left thigh. If it still feels okay, both hands grab, and you're balancing just on. Left arm's gonna come behind your back, props you up nice and tall. Right arm comes up, just so you get some length in the spine. Try to keep the shoulders right over the hips. Cut the arm in and twist. Look over your left shoulder to complete the twist and then drop your shoulders out of your ears. So inhale.
hands heart center. And let's bring the left knee in this time. Still have to do the other side. Hold it and breathe. Draw that knee in as tight as you can. Reach down and grab the left big toe with the left first two fingers and thumb. Right hand on your right hip and extend the leg out. Hold and breathe. Next exhale, left, let go of your foot. Leave the leg there, both hands on your hips. Push through your heel. Good, bend the knee. Nice and slow, press back into your warrior three. So you wanna hold the pose, but you don't wanna hold the breath. Find your hand position. Take length, deep in the breath. Just when you get there, make sure you are breathing. One more inhale. On the exhale, bring the hands down to the floor and standing split other side. We'll drop the upper body in order to get the left leg up to the sky. Good. Eyes stay open. And then both hands down, soften the right knee, tuck the left knee in behind, come down to seated. So I said it before, but you really need to make sure before you go into any twist, spinal twist, that your both hips are grounded into the floor. You don't wanna go into a spinal twist with one hip up. You're gonna increase your risk of getting a little spasm in your back. So get nice and tall, even if you have to sit on your left heel in order to get connection in that right hip. Okay, right hand gonna go behind your back for support. Left arm's gonna go up to the sky and cut it in and twist. Look over your right shoulder if you can. Every inhale, get tall. Every exhale, twist deeper. Use that left arm against the right thigh to get some twist. Squeeze the stale air out of your lungs. Get flexibility in your spine. And then bring yourself back to center. Counter twist. That's it, come back to center. Straighten your legs out. Swing the legs around. Come onto your hands and knees. Let's get deep into the hips. Start with your left leg, slide it forward. Right leg slides back, coming into pigeon pose. Hips are staying square in the center. You're totally in control of this stretch as any other stretch. If you're not feeling enough in the left hip, you're gonna take your left foot, bring it closer to the front edge of your mat. If you're feeling too much in the left hip, then just keep that foot down right next to your right thigh. And then lowering down your forearms if it feels okay. And you may even feel like you could fully extend. Now they look pretty deep in this pose, but you may just wanna stay upright and sink into your left heel, left hip. Give yourself some time to sink into your left hip before you ever consider going down your forearms or deeper. So this is a pretty deep stretch in your left glute, left hip. Try to iron out your backs, try to get a little bit of that roundness gone, with a lot of extension. Good. Every exhale, you release the glutes. This one should hurt so good. And your next exhale, let's walk yourself upright. Shoulders drop down. Try to keep your shoulders as square to the front of the room as possible. And bend your right knee. Reach around and grab, if you can, the toe, the instep, the shin, and draw that heel in toward the hip. Good. 
Staying low in the hips. If you're feeling pretty balanced, you're gonna try and reach around with both hands. Deep breath, every exhale, let your shoulders go a little bit more. Important to try to keep the heel over your hip. I mean, try to keep the heel right over your knee here. That's it, you could even grab your arm. Right. Nice and slow so you don't get a charley horse or a cramp. Reach around and grab the ankle, the back foot. Draw the heel into your hip. Shoulders square to the front of the room. Shoulders out of your ears. Get a nice deep stretch here. It's a good opportunity to stretch the quad, hip flexor. Be pretty stiff. Go in control, sit on your right hip, swing the legs around, and then roll down onto your backs. <sighs> Good, knees into your chest. Not done quite yet. So ease your lower back here. You wanna rock a little bit, you can, forward and back, left to right, just to loosen up. Then you're coming back to center. You're gonna bring your arms out to your side, palms flat. Arms directly out of your shoulders. Knee joint, 90 degree angle, feet flexed. Knees together as, as hard as you can. Try to keep those thighs together. And then drop the knees to the right. Look and reach over your left shoulder and extend the legs, straighten the legs right where they are. If you can get your feet really close to your hands, even better for your deep obliques. Bring the legs straight up to the sky, try to keep them together, and then bend the knees, drop left, stretch out through the heels, straighten those legs, that's it, and straight up to the sky. Bend, drop right, straighten, straight up. Bend, <laughs> drop left, straighten, go straight up, that's it, bend, Try to relax your shoulders, drop right, straighten up, last time, bend, drop left, straighten through the heels and up. So not only flexibility, but strength in the spine there. Draw your knees into your chest. Bring your forehead to your knees if you can. And then let the legs go. This time you're gonna drop the knees all the way over to the right side, nice spinal twist. If you wanna get deeper into the stretch, go ahead and put the right hand on the outside of the left thigh. Look over your left shoulder. Find that one little tight spot in your back and just take a nice deep exhale into it. If there's any pressure on your low back, then adjust where your knees are. It could be closer to your chest, they could be further away. Big deep breath in. Exhale. Draw the knees back into your chest and other side. It's the best part. Good. Good. 
that's it. Bring the knees back into the chest. Rock yourself up and back two or three times. Coming up to easy crawl.